Hello, my friends, and welcome back to the rabbit haul. Oh my goodness, it's finally time to do another haul. If you are new to this channel, my hauls are not products that I haven't tried. Instead, it's kind of a video where I show you what I've been buying, I give you speed reviews, and it's a little bit of a favorites and fails as well. I just find it's more helpful to share with you my thoughts on products after I've been using them for, you know, at least a month as opposed to I just bought this and it looks pretty. I will tell you in advance, we kind of have a rather decent amount of fails in this video, so um, hopefully you don't mind that. Oh, and let me explain the look really quickly. So we're actually doing something tonight. Don't panic. It's nothing like whatever is going on out in LA. Are you all fed up with it? Are you fed up with the party pictures from people who just absolutely cannot respect other people? It's so obnoxious. But anyway, let me tell you, let me tell you what's going on. So tonight we are celebrating Yardi Gras. You may have heard of Mardi Gras. You may also much expect that it's canceled this year and it is. However, we in New Orleans like to celebrate the spirit of Mardi Gras no matter what. So people have been turning their homes into house floats and everybody's driving around in their cars. We're gonna do the same thing. We're taking a picnic with us. I did my uh, visible from a car look of pure happiness. I do know though that outside of Mardi Gras, this wig gets a lot of hate. It really does. So um, if you don't like it, just know you're not alone. And with the eyeshadow, I just really wanted to do something different. You know, that's the spirit of Mardi Gras. Just kind of have fun, no rules. And I thought, you know, why do another cut crease and winged eyeliner? We'll do something a little more on the editorial side. I absolutely love the dark to light, like the dark purple to light pink. I love that placement. I'm not sure on the yellow out here. I like it under my eye. It ties the wig together. Maybe what I'll do, you know those little stick on gemstones? I could stick some of those around. That would make it more fun also. I might try to do that. But I am over here on limited time, so we have to do this haul first. We're gonna be covering makeup in today's video. We've got skincare, we've got some dupes in particular for this video, and I've got some fragrance to talk about and some boxes to unbox. You know this is what I've been using. I finally bought from Glamlight. Oh my goodness, I was determined to find an indie brand to buy from, and I actually initially was going to buy from Sydney Grace, but I heard there were some uh, website safety issues, and no thank you, no thank you. I've already had my identity stolen. We don't need any more of that kind of stuff. So instead I went with Glam Light and I'm so happy I did. This is the newer palette. This is the Pro Paint palette. So it's a little bit smaller than the older one. And even in saying that, I now understand why people say they're a little awkward to store. They are, but I do have a, a great system for storing my palettes. I'll, I'll show you. My, don't let me forget. I'll show you. I am thoroughly blown away by the quality here. These mattes are amazing. They blend extremely well. They last a long time. The shimmers are actually a little bit lighter, but you can build them up. Personally, I like more mattes than shimmers. Just gives me a little bit more freedom in working with eyeshadow. It's just, it's just my style is really what I'm saying. So I, I love the amount of mattes in here compared to the shimmers. It's incredible. You do get some amount of staining with the purples and the red shades. That seems to be very common. Those colors often stain your eyelids, whereas these not so much. I don't know what that is. It must be something just about the pigments themselves, but it's phenomenal. This is another black owned brand, by the way. And again, if you saw my post on Instagram, black owned brands just really do intense pigments very well, or you can wear them more light. You know, I applied this much more lightly today. Oh yeah, this is what I'm wearing. My eyeshadow palette storage. What I do, we went to Goodwill one day because I needed ideas. I needed a, a better system to store my palette. So I was there and I saw an organizer for a, a desk, like for papers. There's a name for this, but I'm a millennial. Everything is on computers nowadays. So needless to say, there was one of these at Goodwill and it was $5. I grabbed that. The thing is so perfect for palettes. If you have a lot of palettes, oh my gosh. I finally bought the Tower 28 lip gloss. Way to be extraordinarily late to the game. Trust me, I know. I think I was so convinced in my head that this was another situation where people were overhyping something and then you buy it and you're not that impressed with it. 
Uh, but yeah, anyway, uh, they're actually quite nice. One thing to know is that you don't actually see that much color from these. They're definitely more of a sheer gloss on. So I'm actually wearing this one to give you some context. This is the Fearless shade, but I really like how light they are on your lips. They are absolutely not a sticky lip gloss. And yet, I think the con that I heard with these is that you have to reapply them constantly. I would not say it's that bad. You do have to reapply them, but they don't disappear immediately. The one I'll probably buy in a full size is this clear one right here, which has a little bit of tint because I've been putting it over <laughs> lip liner. This one is chill. I wore this in yesterday's video. Uh, it's just such a nice clear gloss. I've been looking for the perfect clear gloss for a while. Really happy I finally tried them, and yeah, they're, they're, they're worth the hype. I also bought more highlighters. I bought from Beauty Bakery the Milk and Honey palette because obviously I don't have enough highlighter. But how adorable is this Milk and Honey theme palette? It's actually Sizz Milk and Honey on this. Gorgeous shades. I'm wearing this one today. And these are those really nice highlighters that don't emphasize texture. It's a little bit a little bit less of uh, an intense highlighter as opposed to something like we'll say Ofra. Not quite as intense but really looks nice on your skin. I've been trying to buy more from Beauty Bakery because they're easily available at Ulta, but I just, I hadn't found a lot of products that I loved from them before. This one is actually, this is nice. The e.l.f. Marshmallow Blender, I wanted to throw this in this video because I bought quite a few of these when they went on clearance. This was the holiday collection packaging. So for $2.50, I got a bunch of sponges, and I'm ready to say that I think e.l.f. has the best budget sponge. I absolutely think it. It's a wonderful texture. Doesn't absorb too much foundation. Does blend out really nicely. I also, I like the um, Shop Miss A ones. The problem with those is that they're a little inconsistent. Sometimes you get some that do absorb a ton of foundation and other times not as much. These are much more consistent. Oh, and also in contrast to the Juno sponges, those are better for full coverage. These are better for light to medium coverage. And Alma Beauty, you saw me buy a lot of Alma in the months of November and December, and that video will be coming to this channel Wednesday. We're doing a dedicated video to this brand because I absolutely love them. If you saw my Instagram post, I did talk a little bit about how my problem with Alma Beauty is I kept buying the wrong shades. So hopefully I can take that experience and make that into a, a helpful video so that you too buy the correct shades. The Catrice Clean ID Hydro BB Cream. I had high hopes for this and I do like it, but you really should know this is an extremely light coverage. Uh, foundation. It's not even a foundation. It's really a tinted moisturizer, a moisturizer with very little tint, I would say. I have a video where I try this on. Uh, I just don't think it's going to be for most people. I think light to medium coverage, even if people have a tendency to say light coverage, we typically want to put on foundation and get coverage. That's, that's what I think. That's what I think is going on. I'm sure some people do not need any coverage whatsoever. You might like this, uh, but I don't think it's going to be a very popular product because of that. I have a full video on the Hydromaniac from Urban Decay, so I won't talk too much about this, but I will say I don't think you need to run out and purchase it. There are definitely already options on the market at better prices. I personally way prefer the Revlon Candid Glow Foundation, just me. I think it wears better. I think it looks better. Um, but you can apply this really light and get the same thing. So it's not necessarily a bad product. I just, I don't think it's that unique. And all three of these are a story time. So e.l.f. Camo CC Cream, I said I was upset about the price. This is $14. I ended up getting it for free through Influencer, and I do like it, but you should know a few things. So first of all, I do think that this is a dupe for It Cosmetics CC Cream. Some people said they don't see that. I think it has the same amount of coverage. It's higher coverage. This is not that Catrice foundation I was just showing you. This is definitely medium coverage, too buildable. It's a natural finish on your skin, so it looks great. Has collagen, peptides, niacinamide. I don't pay too much attention to that in makeup products where I want it to sit on the surface of my skin, but yeah, it's there. Uh, the, the catch and the benefit here is that it's a shorter ingredients list, so it does not contain my allergens, so I can actually wear this, unlike It Cosmetics, but it does have octanoxate. I've said this before, somehow I am able to wear octanoxate. I, I think it's just that I'm probably allergic to some 
chemical filters, but not all of them. Octanoxate works for me, but it doesn't work for everybody. And that's, that's a big difference right there because the CC cream does not have any chemical filters. Uh, also, octanoxate is not a reef safe sunscreen. I've heard uh, uh, mixed thoughts on that. But I know a lot of people do pay attention to that, so I think that it probably would have been better for them to just go with the titanium and zinc filters, however they did include that. But overall, I like it. I think it wears really nicely. I actually really think they did this well, and it's, it's, it's funny in retrospect that I didn't want to pay $14 for this, even though I've bought much more expensive foundations. It's actually really nice. I almost forgot to tell you a huge potential con with this. You have to wear a primer with this, or at least a really good moisturizer. If you don't, this can look drying. If you have the right primer, absolutely no problems. It's beautiful, but it, it really needs some extra moisture. And then I got another Vox box because Influencer is absolutely they're running the game these days. They are running the PR game. And this was a very exciting one for me because what's my favorite foundation of all time? The Shiseido Synchro Skin Self Refreshing. And they sent me the new Radiant Lifting and the primer. The Soft Blurring Primer is actually excellent. It does remind me a lot of the Smashbox Primerizer, but it's a great hydrating primer. Works well with that e.l.f. CC cream or with this. With some primers, you kind of have to buff them into your skin a lot. Not at all the case with this one. It is very, very easy to just quickly throw it on and go. The foundation itself. So it's another SPF 30 that contains octanoxate and titanium dioxide. So I can use it just like the uh, self-refreshing. But again, not everybody wants octanoxate in their foundations and also I think the main difference between this and the self-refreshing is that this one is supposed to be a little bit more dewy, whereas that one's a more natural finish. So, you know, Influencer requires you to write a review, and I thought, well, I want to write a review that compares those, just in case somebody else is thinking, well, self-refreshing is the best foundation in the world, how is this new one? And the thing is, I'm actually not super blown away by it. I think that dewy finishes look really great on younger people, but they can absolutely draw attention to pore size or to any fine lines that you may have. Just, I mean, it's the nature of this reflective property, right? Same reason that highlighters can emphasize texture or pores. You're bringing light into the face. So if you are bringing light into any uh, skin imperfections that you don't love, you may not like it as much. And that's the big contrast between this and self-refreshing. Self-refreshing wears so well. It conceals any flaws that you may have. It, uh, it, it does self-refresh. It's almost like it rehydrates through the day. So if you have any fine lines, it just keeps plumping them through the day. Whereas this, it's a nice foundation, but it doesn't do that. So again, it's a like, but not a love. I think that, you know, if you are very happy with your skin and you want a dewy medium coverage foundation, you may love this. Super easy to work with, great shade range. They do have some olive shades in this line, although they sent me the lighter one. This is 160 shell. And I am wearing this again today. I've been wearing this one for about two weeks in my videos. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's good. It's just not as mind blowing. Can I really quickly rant about Influencer? Don't get me wrong. I love Influencer. It's very nice of them to send products, but so they send me the Vox box. I'm testing out the foundation for at least two weeks. I want to write a good, helpful review for other people. And I get this email from Influencer and I'll paraphrase this, but basically it said, you did promise that you would do some reviews. So where are they? Don't do that to people, Influencer. Don't do that. That's why you're known for bad reviews. People associate the word Influencer with a bunch of five-star crappy reviews where people say, so happy I got this for free. Thanks. I always say this with Influencer. Know that you are allowed to have time to write reviews and you do not have to write a glowing review. In fact, the companies never even see your reviews. Instead, the idea here is that you're supposed to write reviews that are honest. That is the idea. That's actually what Influencer says as well, so that you can help people with buying the right products. It actually helps the company if you write a good review, even if you don't like the product, because that will limit, you know, people buying a product and not liking it and then returning it, which now is extra waste for the company. They don't make any profit off returns. And you all know, I try to give good, honest reviews on this channel. I have not had 
very many companies get upset with me for that. A lot of them have thanked me for giving a thorough review instead of just saying, go ahead and buy this. People want good reviews. They want to find the right products for them. <sighs> My last product I've not tried. This is the Revlon Color Stay Light Cover Foundation. I wanted to try this so badly. So I saw this on the Ulta website and I was freaking out. I was trying to buy it through a CVS. I did buy it through CVS. They sent me the wrong product. I get on the phone. That was an absolute disaster. It took about two hours to not resolve the issue. The issue apparently was that they hadn't received this since it's a brand new foundation. So they're not supposed to even have it on the website. It wasn't available for sale. So I gave up. I buy it from Ulta only to discover that this incredible quest to try the new Revlon Color Stay. We have a total of three chemical filters in this product. Nowhere does it mention that on the Ulta website. Ulta, you have got to get better about this. So now I'm scared to try it because I usually get a burning sensation. I get itchy and I break out if I use the wrong chemical filters and I don't know if these will work. I really don't. But I want to try this so badly. This is 150 buff. See, the thing about Revlon is that 150 buff is such a wonderful light olive shade at the drugstore. That's so unheard of. But Revlon does that shade correctly. I would like to try this light coverage SPF 35, but you got to tell me it's chemical filters. I don't know. At this point, with what I went through to get this, there is a part of me that's going, just ruin your face one day. Because the other problem is I heard that even if you return an unopened product to Ulta, they, they still have to trash it right now because of what's going on in the world. So I don't want to do that. I don't, I don't know. Ugh. I finally have some fragrance to haul in this video. So let's start with the products that I was sent over by the Butters Hygienics. This is the Rosehip Reishi number no. 58 fragrance. I was so excited to get this. I did almost buy some of these in my last order from them, but I don't know why. I just, I think it's that I didn't yet know that their fragrances were going to be extremely strong. This is just so unique. It's actually really hard for me to describe this, which I think that's what some people are looking for in their fragrances. Let me read to you what they say about this. So it is unisex situation day, 15 mil rollerball, $9. That is really a tough price to beat. Fragrance profile, top green notes, apple, peony, heart, rose water, lily, and reishi mushroom, and then base rose hip. Somehow all of that to me comes together to smell like cantaloupe or some kind of melon. I'm so much better at describing fragrances as how they make me feel, so, or like where they take me, you know what I mean? So to me, this takes me to a hot summer day eating melons with your family. It's just a cozy kind of scent, and it's not too strong either. It's definitely more of a, a soft smell. Oh, and something really interesting about this. You know how most perfumes have that real drying feel because they're made with a lot of alcohol? I do not know what this is made of, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's not made with alcohol. It does not feel dry whatsoever. And they also sent another body moisturizer, which I love their moisturizers. I will link you my video if you did not see my big review of this brand. This is the Retinol and Hyaluronic Acid Anti-Aging Body Moisturizer. And like I said in that video, the smells of their products are amazing. To me, this one is somehow stronger than the perfume. It is very strong and it smells exactly, exactly like chocolate cake. Not really cooked chocolate cake. It's uh, again with that feel that I'm better at describing. It smells exactly like when you are making a chocolate cake, when you're standing there whipping up all of your ingredients. That is what this smells like. And this one is a more advanced formula, so they did include hyaluronic acid in it. It looks like it's rosehip though, and I know that some companies say uh, rosehip is a natural alternative to retinol. I would prefer for them to rename it. That is just me. I know that some people do not want retinol in their products, especially in a moisturizer, so it might be more reassuring for them to know that it's rosehip instead. Let's do some unboxings next. These were both kindly sent by the brands, and you know how I do boxes. Again, like everything else, I've been trying them out. So we're going to start with this month's glossy box. I believe I still have a link to get the 
uh, your first glossy box for $16. The theme this month is sing, dance, love, and repeat. They are getting so cute with these boxes. I have so many of the old pink boxes that I use for storage purposes, but I'm loving that almost every box I've seen, or actually every box I've seen from them lately does have a theme to it. So, I was always attracted to Glossy Box and I was a longtime subscriber because what I really enjoy about them is that they are good at giving you products from other countries. And you know, I think that <laughs> there's a bit of a tendency among some Americans to forget that there's other countries out there and other brands from other countries and they often have great products. My favorite product in this box was actually this right here, which is apparently from a little German brand. This is SYS Superfood for Your Skin, moisturizing cream with prickly pear and probiotic for dry skin. Probably part of why I enjoy it. I went on the website for this company and kind of plastered all over their website. They had probiotics are not considered animals, therefore our products are vegan, which I certainly hope vegans are not deterred by bacteria because it's everywhere. This is a beautiful texture though, absolutely for dry skin, and I've been testing out so much Korean skincare that is very lightweight that I was really happy to have this in my routine, a little bit more hefty of a moisturizer. You can see it's taking me a little bit more time to buff it in because it is definitely a more occlusive product, but it is beautiful. Oh, hold on, my hands actually needed this yet again. All right, so anyway, that is a $20 value. You get the full size Avant Skincare Velvet Perfecting Rose Lip Sugar Scrub. I have tried this. I actually liked it more than I thought I would. I'm always iffy on this brand because this is a very expensive brand. This is $71 and it is the full size, but the thing that they do is they give you different packaging on their products as opposed to the products that you can buy. So the full size of this is in a uh, a little jar, whereas this is a tube. I'd rather have a tube anyway. But I looked at this and thought, no, that's not gonna be the kind of scrub that I like because it's not a very thick scrub. However, what you're supposed to do with this is you massage it into your lips and you leave it on for two to three minutes. And you actually, it actually is nice. You could probably see just how occlusive that is on camera. It's very, very hefty. And yeah, it does leave your lips looking quite nice. It's the right amount of scrub, but all I gotta say is, I definitely said that Sarah Hap had expensive lip scrubs, and I would just like to uh, make a YouTuber apology here. I'll go get my, uh, my hoodie and take off my makeup. That is not the most expensive scrub on the market, not by far. And then you get some Korean skincare in here. This is from the brand Lap Coast. This is the Pearl Brightening Sleeping Mask. This is a $6 value. Uh, this is nice, but again, it is that lighter texture. So the Korean type of sleeping masks are meant to be paired with the moisturizer. So you see how quickly this buffs out in comparison to that first moisturizer that I showed? Yeah, it's a little bit lighter, but it actually is quite nice. I've heard a lot about this brand lately, so I was really excited to get to try them. We have some Brazilian shampoo and conditioner. I had Ara try this out because she is always my uh, person that I refer to for anything hair. So they're little tiny bottles of shampoo and conditioner, and she said she liked it, although the scent is definitely more of a green scent, and she said the conditioner is a little bit light. I also tried these. They say they're strengthening shampoos, and as somebody with really fine flat hair, strengthening often means protein rich, and that often goes very, very poorly. It'll make your hair really flat, but these actually didn't. They actually did make my hair feel strong without weighing it down. So I think in this case, I may have been more impressed than she was, so I guess we can conclude here maybe more for fine hair than thick wavy, which is her hair type. And then the last item in the box is the Bella Pierre Cosmetics. What is this? The Shimmer Powder. Looks like I got this shade. Wow. Honestly, honestly, meh. It might be pretty, but I just don't use loose powder anymore. It's so messy. So messy. I will say, this brand takes me back. This is a brand I bought uh, a lot from. Ooh eight years ago. Back when I was first getting into makeup, I wanted to have really bright colored makeup and it was really hard to find, but this brand actually had it and not for 
too high of a price. But it, back then, it was loose shimmers. That's what I bought. And uh, now I'm just kind of like, nah, just give me a palette these days. So I guess I'd say overall I liked the box. I like getting to try products from different countries and I just had one little miss. I can see it not being uh, as too appealing if you are more of a makeup person though, is that box definitely is weak on makeup in my opinion. The J Beauty Collection box, this is their New Year's box and it is still available. This is $45 and valued at I think over $230. So if you missed my last unboxing of this, what this company is doing is they're bringing J Beauty to Americans where we just don't talk about nor use a lot of Japanese skincare and it's, it's certainly a nice option for people who are looking for simpler routines. Japanese skincare routines do not use 10 steps, instead it's more three steps and done. And what I love about this box is how much info they give you on every product. You get a full card for every product. My favorite product ended up being this right here, the Perfect One Moisture Gel. I think this is actually fairly affordable too. $53 for 2.64 ounces, so it's a big product. And apparently this is a, a bestseller in Japan. You know, it's so funny that I don't think we have any clue what companies are actually bestsellers in other countries. So I was looking at K-Beauty and apparently one of the top sellers actually in Korea is Hera. Who on earth talks about Hera in K-Beauty videos that are American? Nobody. You would think it's Purito. Nope, it's Hera. It's apparently Suisu also. I don't even remember some of the other brands. But yeah, that was super surprising to me. Anyway, this is a beautiful beautiful moisturizer. It is a moisture gel, so it's a little bit more uh, lightweight. Look at this little spoon that's built into the lid. How cute, how adorable is that? That is such a nice touch. And yeah, hopefully you can see it's a more of a jelly-like consistency, but not too light, not too light. It's a really great texture and great size. We have the Qtopia Hand Decorte, I hope I'm saying that correctly, Hand and Decollete Moisturizer. This is quite nice. I like the concept of being a hand or decollete cream. And this one is thicker, definitely probably the most occlusive moisturizer in this whole video, but again, because it's made for your neck or for your hands. Let's once again use it as a hand cream. This one, the La Vie Precious Emulsion, this is gorgeous. This is just a really, really nice brand, but they are very pricey. This is $160. If you look at the website for this company, they actually talk a lot about the science behind their products, but on the card here, you can read about the apple derived ceramide, the licorice, and then the proteoglycan, which they're extracting from salmon to keep the price down. That used to be a much more expensive ingredient. That has 1.3 times the water retention power of hyaluronic acid. And then we have the Biolab Creme Brillante. I hope I'm saying that correctly. This is $100, but it is sustainably made with peach extract, fresh golden herb extract from their farms, and alpine rose extract. I'd basically say if you are interested in trying out Japanese skincare, especially the principles of Japanese skincare, those boxes are amazing to just kind of dip your toes in, see what brands are out there, and see if it's something that works out for your skin. Last section for this video is skincare. It's mostly drugstore skincare uh, and also kind of a lot of maybe fails. I'm just letting you know. I also bought a few products from Pixi, which I'm not going to haul in this video because I'm going to have a dedicated video on Pixi coming to the channel next week. So stay tuned for that. But let's let's get the non-drugstore out of the way. So I did talk about this in my empties video. I tried the Falane dual detox mask and I loved it. Blend of AHAs, BHA, and PHA made with clays. Just a really good all-in-one exfoliating and purifying mask. I loved this. So in the month of December, Ulta had their Platinum Perks Day and they were offering a free toning mist when you purchased anything else from the brand. So I was like, I do want to try that. I enjoyed their mask. Let's buy something from the brand. So I bought the hydrating cleanser. It's that situation of are these really from the same brand that made the mask that I enjoyed so much because these are not it. The hydrating cleanser sounded so promising to me. I love cream cleansers. I figured hydrating dry skin, there's no way this is going to be a miss. And they have some uh, white willow bark in here. So you get a little bit of BHA exfoliation. But what the heck? It's not hydrating. Instead, it stings my skin. 
I was like, what if this is just me? Am I, is something wrong with my skin? Is it me? I looked through the reviews, which are mostly influencer and actually a lot of people saying that it didn't work out for them either. So I don't know what happened here, but it is not, in my opinion, as well formulated as quite a few other cream cleansers on the market. There's so many hydrating cleansers that actually don't sting. I wonder if it's just really high levels of the tangerine oil and grapefruit oil. I guess that's possible that it's just not balanced enough for my skin. But yeah, it was a fail. I am going to finish it as a hand soap. I don't want to return things since, you know, that's contributing to waste. I'll finish it off instead. But yeah, it was a miss. And the free mist with purchase. Also a mist. <laughs> Stop with that joke. It's not as funny as you think. This is a terrible nozzle. It may be a great product and actually looks like it is. It's a fragrance-free toning mist. I was thinking maybe it would be a lot like my Indie Lee mist, but you have to have a good spray. How can I show you this without ruining my face? Can we do this? Do you see how it sprays all in one straight line? A good mist for comparison purposes. See how it goes spread out? That's what you want a mist to do. You don't want it to shoot people in the face. Again, really a shame because the ingredients are actually great. We've got CoQ10 in here. Again, why I was thinking it would be like the Indie Lee Mist. No added fragrance, has aloe, chamomile, kelp extract. That's an interesting addition. But yeah, it's got to be in a good spray. So I'm not just going to waste this. I am going to transfer it to another bottle, but I just don't have one at the moment. I don't have another sprayer. I'm just baffled that a company would obviously spend a lot of time making a really nice formula. It's a wonderful formula, but then you don't have a good sprayer on it that ruins the product. Anyway, I digress. Let's move on. I want to talk about these Revolution products. I bought these on Ulta Clearance. The Colloidal Silver Serum, which was in my refrigerator, so it has some condensation. This is a great serum, but it occasionally does not get along with other products. It contains salicylic as well as colloidal silver, which is a great healing ingredient, so great in principle. Uh, I used to really like the Dr. Babor colloidal silver moisturizer. I actually really want to repurchase that. I'm just waiting for a good deal. So I thought, let's try this in the meantime. But yeah, occasionally I'll apply this to my skin and try to buff it in, and it looks soapy. Have any of you ever had that happen? It's the strangest thing. I don't know if it's just an odd interaction or what, but... I only use it at night because of that situation. And then the 5% caffeine solution and hyaluronic acid. I got this for dirt cheap. They say it's an under eye serum, but I'm using it on my body and it is going very, very well for that purpose. I use it for these very small stretch marks that I have. I do try to be cognizant of that. Very small stretch marks uh, and they, they disappear as long as I have this applied. I do have to be consistent with it though. And then I bought some skincare dupes and this was a disaster. I don't know why I believed in skincare dupes. Because here's the thing, skincare dupes, to make a skincare dupe, you have to have similarities in the formula. You can't just have the same mentality as makeup dupes, where if the color is similar, then it's a, it's a lipstick dupe. If the color scheme is similar, it's a palette dupe. You can't apply that to skincare. It depends on the ingredients. So Physician's Formula over here with this new organic wear lip treatment, yes, it does cosmetically look like the fresh <laughs> look disgusting actually it does look like the fresh balms it's got the same kind of consistency to it where it's quite gloopy so that's why it looks so funny but it is gross oh it smells so terrible it smells like rotting cheese and it has a bad taste to it too uh-uh listen i have tried to enjoy this but every time it gets in my mouth i'm just so grossed out it, it's just not a dupe it's not a dupe same packaging, similar feel, not a dupe. You cannot have a disgusting product and say it's a dupe for the Fresh Balms, which do not smell or taste gross. The Neutrogena Body Oil, I heard this was a dupe for the Nukes Oil, which I do really love. This isn't bad. This is a great product, but there's something about the smell of Nukes that just, it's just not here. I think fragrance is also basically impossible to dupe. That's why the Trade Secret Act has been protecting fragrance for years. It's impossible to dupe. Uh, but it is, it's all right. I guess what it comes down to for me is that I can't really, <laughs> I can't even use nukes anymore after trying those Flacele body oils. They're just so nourishing. A little goes such a long way that to switch back to, you know, basically isopropyl Meristate, that's what this is. Sure, it feels nice and it's not too greasy, but it just doesn't quite do for my skin what, you know, 
a, a much more complex oil does. So, yeah, it's kind of a miss for me, even though I can see why some people would like this one. But I also bought the Neutrogena Hydro Boost Hydrating Lip Treatment, which was, I believe, 7 to $10 for this one. I heard this was a dupe for the Laneige lip mask. No, it's not. How do people make these assumptions? Just because something is a, a potted lip balm does not mean that it's the same as other potted lip balms. This one is extremely light. It actually reminds me a whole lot more of the Kopari lip balm. But here's the catch. I love the Kopari lip balm. This is $13 for 0.35 ounces. This is, we'll, we'll go in the middle here. We'll say this was $8.50 for 0.1 ounces. I always bring this up, I know, but you remember that whole Elf situation where that lady was so mad that she got on Facebook and said Elf lied to her about the primer without realizing that it was only a half ounce product? She embarrassed herself so much by not paying attention to the size of products. So here's the thing. What did we assume this was? $9, 9 times 0.39, 18, 27. So we've got $30 for the amount that you would get here and 13 here. That's why you gotta watch sizes. And this is still better and in a tube anyway, so I will absolutely not repurchase this, no thank you. It just is too expensive. This is a drugstore product that is too expensive. I feel like this is likely a long video and I wanna be more thorough with my Ulta Love Your Skin product, so we're gonna save that for a future haul. I also have some K-Beauty to haul, so we'll do that probably next week or the week after, but that's it. That's the end of my haul video. Thank you all so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. I hope you all stay safe. Let me know if you've been buying anything fun in the comment section below, and I will see you all next time.